Chapter 31 Diary Entries Battle Creek, Sabbath, March 2, 1889 Spoke in the tabernacle, in the forenoon, from Revelation 3. I urged upon the people the necessity of religion in their homes, and of educating and training their children to have well-balanced characters that the Lord can approve. In the afternoon I spoke about thirty minutes, then we had a social meeting. Again I urged the necessity of thorough work in the home life. While these duties so essential were neglected, we need not expect the blessing of God. And the Lord will work with our efforts, but all will not do the work He has given us to do. Battle Creek, Sunday, March 3, 1889 Devoted my time to writing important letters to Dr. Maxson and wife and Brother T. in Oregon in regard to investing money in an institution in Fresno. The past course of Dr. Maxson does not appear straight in leaving the health retreat as he did. Met with the ministers in the college chapel, spoke about forty-five minutes with great freedom. Then the ministers spoke in their turn. We had a refreshing season. Visited Elder Olson. Battle Creek, Monday, March 4, 1889. This day I have had very threatening symptoms of the heart. This alarms me. There are some things that trouble me in regard to my writings, how much to write and how much to let alone. Attended meeting in the evening and spoke to a good congregation upon the duty of parents to their children, laying before them the state of things which brings the frown of God upon us. There were many testimonies born, but as yet they do not see or sense their wicked course in neglecting properly to train their children. Battle Creek, Tuesday, March 5, 1889 We had Dr. Kellogg's team and rode out to Richard Godsmark's. Emma White and Sister Whitney went with me. Found the roads not very bad. Wednesday, March 6, 1889 Rode down to see Sister Blank and her husband in regard to Sister Close's money. Sister Close is dying. At 5 p.m. received news of Sister Close's death. Visited Henry Miller and had some talk with him that I think was profitable. Called and saw where Mary Stewart was at work, preparing in books all that I have written which has been put into print. At 7 p.m. took electric bath. Visited Aunt Mary listened to the reading of manuscript for volume 1 battle creek thursday march 7 1889 mailed letters to elder fulton listened to reading of manuscript for volume 1 conversed with brother hansen in evening attended meeting at tabernacle spoke about 1 hour then called for those who had backslidden to come forward for prayers about 30 responded Many of them spoke, and some confessions were made. While praying for those who requested prayers, the blessing of the Lord rested upon me, and I was comforted and encouraged. I was in a perspiration when I left the meeting. It was past nine o'clock. My rooms were cold, and I was chilled through. Could not sleep until midnight. Battle Creek, Friday, March 8, 1889 I thank the Lord this morning that I am as well as I am. I feel no ill effects from the exposure last night. Surely the Lord is good, and I will praise his holy name. I had a profitable interview with Sister Rankin, matron of the college, attended to some business in the city of Battle Creek, was called from my visiting to have an interview with a young brother in the faith named Kellogg. He is in perplexity as to whether he shall study to be a doctor or a minister. I advised him to pray in faith that God would give him light, for his promise is sure. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. James 1, verses 5 and 6. In the evening we had a consultation with Brother A.T. Jones and Brother Daniel Jones in regard to the work to be done in this church. We feel intensely anxious that the church as a whole shall recover herself from her lukewarm state. Battle Creek, Sabbath, March 9, 1889 
Elder A. T. Jones occupied the forenoon, speaking from the fifth commandment. The Lord gave him freedom in addressing the people. In the afternoon I spoke to the people from Hebrews 2. I felt a solemn burden upon me for the church and urged upon them the necessity of taking up their neglected duties in their families. Home religion is needed. The congregation were somewhat stirred. We then called for backsliders and sinners to come forward, and about one hundred responded, mostly young men and young women. We had a season of fervent prayer, and then many excellent testimonies were born. Many confessed their pride, their backsliding, their partaking of the spirit of the world, and their determination to live a different life. Battle Creek, Tuesday, March 14, 1889 spoke to the people assembled at the tabernacle, felt deeply over the condition of the church. The burden was heavy upon me. Battle Creek, Friday, March 15, 1889 Sick all day, had chills and quite a high fever, had to keep my bed all day. Sabbath, March 16, 1889 Sick Saturday, unable to attend meeting. Sunday, March 17, 1889. Sick Sunday, I am weak and debilitated. Monday, March 18, 1889. Thank my Heavenly Father, I am able to think and have a little strength to write today. Thursday, March 21, 1889. I was very weak, but tried to be in the committee meeting today. But after being helped up the stairs, I grew so faint, W.C. White helped me down and home. Friday, March 22, 1889. Again, I tried to be at the committee meeting and succeeded and said to them some very plain things in reference to the spirit that prevailed at Minneapolis. Battle Creek Sabbath, March 23, 1889. In afternoon attended meeting, where the subject of the two covenants was presented by Elder A. T. Jones, I could not be pleased with the spirit that was manifested by Elder Underwood. He seemed to ask questions not for the sake of obtaining light, but of bringing confusion and perplexity by questions he did not believe himself. I felt it my duty to state to my brethren that those who acted so unchristian a part at Minneapolis had a work to do in confessing the spirit which prompted them to action, and in seeking as far as lies in their power to remove the impression they have left on other minds that was misrepresenting their brethren and misrepresenting me. If all who commit wrongs would feel that Jesus loves us more dearly for the temptation that has been yielded to and confessed, then if there had been no error, no breach in the armor. Battle Creek, Wednesday, March 27, 1889. Had a long talk with Brother Conradi, speaking plainly of the unchristlike spirit in which nearly all of our ministering brethren acted apart. When the questioning voice, full of earnest interest, should have been asking watchmen what of the night, there were pale faces peering out into the darkness. The response comes, The night cometh, and also the day. Thursday, March 28, 1889 Left Battle Creek at 12 o'clock p.m. in company with Fanny Bolton. Arrived at Chicago at half-past seven. We met Brother Sisley in the depot, and he accompanied us to the mission. We were above one hour in reaching our destination. We were welcomed, and a very nice room was prepared for us, a parlor and bedroom, curtained off from the parlor. 